Hello and welcome back. Today I want to look at a switch mode power supply calculation tool that on the surface only helps with the power stage, but looking deeper into it, you will notice that it's a collection of quite a few handy design tools analyzing multiple aspects of power supply design. What I'm talking about is the Texas Instruments Power Stage Designer. So if you're curious about how this works and what it can do, then keep watching. Now, this is a tool that can be downloaded from the Texas Instruments website. So you'll find it as Power Stage Designer. And if you go to Downloads, you can download the latest version after you've created an account. So you need to log in and then pass a few basic verification steps to download it. Now, the version of the tool that I have is 5.0, but the tool does get periodic updates. So be sure to check in from time to time. Anyway, once the tool is installed, you can finally have a look at it. So the starting screen shows the various calculators and worksheets that the tool contains. And by clicking on each of these, the actual tool will get displayed on the right side. Now, from what I could tell, all of these tools are independent. So values that are calculated in one tool are not transferred to another tool, but that's not that big of an issue. Anyway, let's now take each of these features one by one and have a look. So the first tool is simply called Topology. And this lets you choose from one of the 21 most common switch mode power supply topologies so that it can be analyzed in a bit more detail. So just as an example, let's take the Zeta and have a closer look. So the first thing you will be prompted is to insert some of the main design values. So things like your input voltage range, output voltage, output current, frequency, and so on. And what this tool will help in doing is defining some of the power stage components, usually the inductors. So you get some recommended values based on the input parameters, but you also have new input fields in which you can use some more realistic values. So the default 21.61 and 17.9 microhenry are not really practical values, but 22 microhenry is a commercially available component. And well, once these are filled in, then the final calculations are carried out. Anyway, other than this, this section of the tool will also help in observing the expected waveforms in the main power stage components. So by right clicking on any of the highlighted components, you get a new window appearing in which you have the idealized current and voltage waveforms. And you can play around with the input parameters to see how this impacts things. So you can change the input voltage as well as the load current. And well, on the bottom side, you will get the voltage and current values, both minimum and maximum, as well as average and RMS. Now, this tool does use idealized components, but even so, it offers a very good starting point for a design. Especially if you need to work with a topology you're not very familiar with, you will also usually get some recommendations on how to design it, in various application notes, so on the bottom of the page, and you will also get sometimes example circuits and dedicated driver ICs. So this sort of interface is present for all of the topologies. Now, before moving to the next sections, it's important to mention that if you're not very sure on what exactly the tool is calculating, under the help tab, you have both a quick start page with some general information, as well as a dedicated user guide available on the Texas Instruments webpage. So this document highlights the various mathematics that are implemented in the various sections of the tool. So these can be used to better understand what the tool is doing or just as a mathematical reference for your own calculations. And well, if you need more guidance, then on the webpage of the PowerStage Designer, you also have a set of dedicated tutorials on how to use the tool. Anyway, moving forward, one of the most interesting parts of this tool, for me at least, is this loop calculator. So this should help in adjusting the feedback loop response for the supported types of converter and figuring out the necessary compensation components. Now, again, you need to insert some general parameters of the converter, the exact control scheme type, and the compensation network type, as well as the desired crossover frequency. Next, you have some more difficult parameters, like the amplifier gain information. So this can be quite tricky to obtain since it's not always available in the datasheet. 
And well, finally, the tool will recommend some compensation components and you can fill in the practical components that you wish to use. And from this, you will get the expected response. Now, changing any of the values will change the graph in real time. And you also have the option of displaying various parts of the loop. So by default, it's set to total gain and total phase, but you can just look at the power stage gain and phase or something else. And finally, you also get on the bottom, a summary of the critical parameters. So your crossover frequency, phase margin, slope and gain margin. So one way in which I found this tool can be used is to try and first measure a converter with a given set of compensation components, introduce all of the data at the beginning of the tool, of course, and then try to adjust the gain parameters for your amplifier until the simulated information matches the measurement. So once all of the input data is fixed, especially the gain information parameters, the tool can be used to determine new compensation components to get the final desired response. Now, the next tool is still a supply response related topic, but this time it highlights the observed step response. So what sort of over and undershoot should you expect when a specific load step of a certain value is applied? Here, the inputs are related to the control scheme, so if it's a voltage or current mode supply, the power stage inductor value, the exact current step that's being applied, and the desired voltage variation. And while the other main parameters needed are the crossover frequency and phase margin. So these can be taken over from the previous tool. And finally, the tool will calculate what is the minimum output capacitance needed to achieve the desired effect. Moving on, we have a power loss calculator tool. So part of any power supply is to determine how much energy gets lost on the switching elements. This part of the tool should help with this when analyzing the switching transistors. So the main inputs are the transistor currents, so minimum, maximum, and RMS, which can be obtained from the very first topology tool. And while well, this calculates both conduction, switching losses, body diode losses, as well as driver losses. So specifically the body diode losses will only occur when you have a synchronous converter and one of the transistors is used as a synchronous rectifier. So with the main FET, you don't really get these. Now, one thing to keep in mind with any power supply design is just how the parameters of the switching element need to be balanced to get a good value of final total efficiency. So usually a transistor that has a low conduction loss, so a low RDS on, will usually have large values of charge and capacitance. So it will end up switching a bit slower. Now the allowable charge is related to the exact driver that you have. So can it actually drive the transistor? So this part anyway, should help in choosing between multiple practical transistors to see which offers the best efficiency while looking at all types of losses involved. So you don't just want to minimize conduction losses, but you also want to minimize the switching losses. Anyway, next we have a Pi filter design tool. So in general, when you have a switching converter coupled with strict noise requirements, you will need to add in some sort of filter, either before or after the converter. And this tool is supposed to help in choosing the components needed to get both the right amount of attenuation at any given frequency so this is observed in the gain plot. And then the bottom graph will provide info on the filter's impedance. But the other important aspect has to do with filter damping. So if you choose the right values, your filter can end up amplifying noise, creating a lot of fun behaviors. So with just the right filter values, you can even make things worse compared to not even having a filter at all. So in general, filters do decrease the noise amount, but only if done correctly. And this tool should help in analyzing both the damped and undamped performance of a filter. So to determine if you need some extra components to reduce the exact gain of your filter. Moving on, we have a capacitor current sharing calculator. So here as main inputs, we have the total RMS current running through the capacitor bank and the switching frequency and of course the various capacitors 
parasitics, so their main capacitance, as well as their ESR and ESL. And well, the tool calculates how the incoming RMS current is split among the multiple capacitors. Now, the exact incoming RMS current is something that we can take from our very first topology tool, and this sort of calculation will be relevant for both input and output capacitors. So in general, any modern power supply will have more than one filter capacitor. And especially with lower switching frequencies, you will have at least one electrolytic capacitor. So usually these will be the large value ones. So checking the exact RMS current running through the component is important to prevent in general capacitor overheating and in particular with electrolytics to improve their lifetime. Now, one extremely important feature of this tool is taking into account that capacitors also have series inductance. Now, the tool does give some general values of what sort of inductance you should put in, but if you search really hard for a bad component or you just make a very bad layout, you can get some really high values of inductance. Anyway, the reason why this is important is that you can unwillingly create an oscillator that forces higher RMS currents through the components. So even though the incoming RMS is only 2.5 amperes, the sum of all the currents running through the components is more than this. And in extreme cases, the total sum can be much, much higher. So if you just play around with the values, you can recreate this. The reason being is that you're creating an oscillator that oscillates and increases on the current. So if this happens, then you will have a bit of an issue. Anyway, still on the topic of capacitors, with our next tool, the bulk capacitor for AC-DC power supplies, we have a bulk capacitor calculator. So when you have a rectified sine wave, like with a mains application, your voltage will have a specific ripple shape, and the exact amplitude will be dictated by the amount of capacitance provided, and the amount of power that is being drawn. So with this tool, you need to provide the drawn amount of power, the minimum supply voltage, as well as the acceptable voltage variation and the line frequency. So the tool will work out what is the minimum necessary capacitance to achieve this, as well as the RMS current running through the capacitors. This again will be important with electrolytics to prevent damage and prolong their lifetime. So any good electrolytic capacitor datasheet will provide information on the RMS current limit. Now, one thing to keep in mind with this tool is that it does not consider the capacitor's ESR, only its capacitance. So the real life ripple will be a bit larger. Next, we have a couple of snubber calculators. So first we have a tool for the basic RC snubber. This relies on first measuring the ripple frequency with the circuit as is, and then adding in a bit of capacitance and observing how the frequency shifts. Based on the two measurements, the parasitics of the circuit can be calculated, and then a set of RC components are proposed. For the other, the RCD snubber calculator, specifically designed for the flyback converter, we have a slightly different approach. Since with this snubber, the objective is to clamp to a specific voltage in order to get to a specific output voltage. So here we have a set of parameters describing the power stage, and from this, the value of the resistor and capacitor are calculated. So with both of these tools, you will be getting theoretical values, so you'll need to find the closest practical values to use in the final design, and then check the operation there. Next, we have a couple resistor circuit based tools, mainly intended to determine the resistors needed for the voltage divider, which is used to set the output voltage of the power supply. So given a certain output voltage, reference voltage, and one of the components, so either the high side or the low side, the tool will calculate the best practical value based on the resistor series that was selected. So these E244896 refer to series of resistors based on their value and their accuracy. And from this value, and also taking into account the provided tolerances, both for the resistors and for the reference, the tool will output the exact output value as well as the range in which it will be found. Now, the other tool, the dynamic output voltage scaling tool, considers the case where you're not just using a fixed output, 
but rather you either have a analog or a digital method of selecting different output values. So this is the same type of voltage divider as with the previous section, which is connected to a op amp and that is connected to a reference voltage. But here the exact output voltage can be adjusted either by injecting an analog voltage through a third resistor or by selecting different resistors to be in parallel with the low side resistor. So basically that is what this tool should be helping. And while well, the final section is a unit converter. So here you will find some uncommon units that you might encounter during a power supply design. So things like magnetic flux, airstream, related to cooling, temperature, and so on. So this part at least is quite self-explanatory. In the end, for a free piece of software, the Texas Instruments Power Stage Designer does have quite a few useful tools that can come in handy when designing a power supply. It's not perfect, no tool really is, but it will offer insight and aid in the process of designing and troubleshooting. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if so, there are more similar videos on my channel that you might want to check out. And if you want to be up to date with my latest releases, also consider subscribing. See you next time. Bye bye.